Howdy folks, welcome to another uh, episode of Winging It. I'm here at the Dre with John Nobrainer. And we're going to talk about this cool show. Um, Thanks for having me back. What's the show called? The show is called My Own Grievous, My Most Grievous Fault. My Most Grievous Fault. So, um, is that title from the Bible? No, or the title is actually from, it's a prayer called The Penitential Act. I heard a lot growing up. I don't know if it's very famous, but it does have this, it, it, the full prayer is, uh, uh, I declare before Almighty God and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words uh, through what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my own fault, through my own fault, through my most grievous fault. That's where the, that's where the title comes from. Uh, I remember so heavy, this, heavy guilt. It's a very heavy-handed <laughs> prayer. And I remember being kind of a little this is sort of panic-inducing hearing this prayer growing up because it's such a broad definition of what sin is. Um, so, but it, it seemed to it seemed to work with the tone of the show. And the very first show that I had was called My Will is Good, which was named after a Nirvana uh, line. The second show was My Cult Leader. So this is my most grievous fault. So there was a sort of a dissension, <laughs> and, uh, thematic dissension in those different terms. So it was me wanting it to be, I sort of consider this as a bit of a trilogy. Uh, I, I thought it made sense to have the word my beginning all three ones. It was a bit of a random thing, but it, it made it made Okay, well, it links it all together. Yeah, that's, that's cool. Fantastic. Now, um... I know the first show had, was based on the the nun exploitation. Yeah, yeah. I don't rem I don't know if I saw your second show. Was uh, the it similar? Second, the second show was a real departure from that. The second show there were no there were no portraits in that. It was still kind of dealing with kind of seventies genre. Okay, I remember it now. Okay, with, I with saw text, that. Yeah, but there were no portraits in it. I didn't after having yes, after yeah. painting fourteen portraits in the first show. I really didn't have much interest in painting portraits. I didn't think anyone would want to see more portraits from me again so fast. So that show was a bit of a, a conscious departure. Um, and then I always was, like, kind of, was that the one with book covers? And stuff? It, was, yeah. it was. It was based on almost more like movie posters. And oh, okay. There was right, a right, 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 right. There were these uh, burning palm trees in the second. Right, I remember it now. So it was done in two halves, and they were both sort of linked, but still kind of had like genre connections that you that you sort of see in this as well too. But um, uh, that one was, uh, like I said, it was it was a departure. But I always I had a lot of research left over from the first body of work. And um, in particular, I had ideas for male portraits that didn't really seem to work. I, couldn't really, I never figured out how to fit them into the first show. And I always knew I'm gonna circle back to this and, and, and mm -hmm. deal with this kind of imagery, which is what I did with this show. So let's talk about this piece here, with a uh, male uh, yeah, with horns. Yeah, it's called Sayer. Um, I, I think that's, again, is coming from that same kind of, this actually isn't even done exploitation in the it's probably an image from like, maybe a softcore porn movie from the 70s, but I wanted to have, basically I wanted to have some kind of devilish figure in here. Because in a lot of these exploitation movies, there's usually some kind of yeah. kind of figure <laughs> who's a kind of, kind, of, kind of a corrupting influence. A I devious want, dude. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to have, what you often see in these films, is a, is a kind of a, an anthropomorphized goat. You know? Right, yes, and of course. Kind of, yeah. Basically a Baphomet figure. Even yeah. that, even the Baphomet figure is not really a satanic figure. If you want to get too much into your occult, no, it's ontology, pagan. Right? Pagan. Yeah, it's a pagan thing, but it's not really satanic necessarily. Yeah, yes, exactly. Um, but uh, it's it's that sort of thing like that with the, the pentagram in the forehead. You see that a lot. I didn't want to have any kind of really obvious supernatural or occult references in this show. I thought I love that kind of imagery, and I deal with it in other shows, but yeah. not in this body of work. I wanted to keep it more admit for folks in the portraits. So I thought if, if these young nuns are going to have impure thoughts, they're more likely to have it for an attractive guy who's, who, who, is a kind of, who, who is a kind of idealized version of Satan, an attractive Satan, uh, as opposed to uh, an anthropomorphized goat, which wouldn't really fit as a right, sort of supernatural right, right, right. being right. surrounded by these all kind of more grounded portraits. And then the other uh, male figure is this, this kind this of... Is, this is interesting. That's Lugosi Jesus. That's actually That's a cool. portrait of Bela Lugosi from, I think it's 1922-23. I didn't realize this, but Bela Lugosi was very famous for playing Christ on stage in Hungary before he came to the U.S. Oh, and I think he also played Jesus on stage in New York. Um, so he was... And it, the ironic thing is that when you see the picture, the eyes are totally the Dracula eyes. It's also very similar to uh, the way he's filmed in a movie called White Zombie. Which is another great film, but right. it's the same gaze. So I thought it was very ironic that his uh, Dracula stare was indistinguishable from his Jesus, <laughs> Jesus stare. Yeah. And I thought, in terms of this, this kind of this sort of mixing of iconography of something which is sort of Dracula and Jesus at the same time, 
it, it, in an ironic way, it worked with the rest of the theme of the show. And it, it was yeah, just it's interesting. And also, yeah, like, yeah. I, also, the other thing I pointed out, and other people pointed out, is that he looks like a, a, a heavy metal, looks like a Norwegian well, black going, metal musician from the 90s. I was going to say, like, he looks like he could... He looks like he could be a musician from a 90s grunge band or something Well, like I that. mean, any time from the 60s on, yeah. he could be... You know, whatever. There was a bit of another people, other people, like Michael Stanley, yeah, artist yeah. who shows here, also mentioned it kind of had a bit of a Charles Manson vibe. Well, he definitely, I mean, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, I was going to mention Manson just because yeah. of the eyes, but. Yeah. Um, so all that kind of iconography is all kind of mixed up, too. Sure. And it's all, it's that kind of iconography is probably, uh, is probably a little bit more appropriate to kind of the timeline of the show, which is kind of dealing with kind of 70s and 80s kind of um, uh, film references. Even though they're, they're sort of timeless, that exploitation as, as a genre really does kind of start in the early 60s and, well, mid 60s and sort of ends, well, in, in the 80s and is having a resurgence right now, actually. Yeah. Um, so that's but the times they're depicting are more. Yeah, it's definitely was innocent times. Yeah, so I, think, I think it started with the Ken Russell film The Devils, which is from 19, I think it's from 1970, okay. 1969 yeah. or 1970. But that seemed to start this sort of, uh, this kind of, this kind of craze. The other a really interesting image uh, I'd love to talk about is this blue. It almost looks like KKK. Well, no, that's it. Well, yeah, you're right. I mean, it was it was a bit of almost like a um, a Philip Preston joke as well, too. Yes, okay, yeah, Preston. yeah, yeah. But it's also there in Goya, right? Because it's a Spanish Inquisitor. Okay, it's that's right, Spanish right. Okay. Figure. And then the Scorpio, uh, the Scorpio symbol on him. I mean, I'm a Scorpio. I just I felt like it needed something in that space. Uh, some people pointed out it's a bit of a it's a bit of a riff on on Ryan Gosling's uh, uh, blue satin jacket in the movie Drive, which also <laughs> has that kind of iconic thing, and which has become kind of a, it's become sort of this icon for people in incel culture. But, okay. Right? And then his character in that uh, this sort of uh, you know angry man of two words who's sort of given to violence. But I wanted to have that figure in here again as a kind of um, institutional figure. So if the you know the young sort of handsome devil is kind of is is tempting you, and this is the figure the judges go after you fall. It, 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 yeah, it, I hadn't yeah, thought of it, yeah. and I hadn't thought of it until I, the show was finished. But in a weird way, it is a kind of that is cool. yeah, 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 yeah. That you're set up, you're set up to to fail, and then you're judged when you fail. But I wanted to have this not a priest or a bishop or something like that, something more sinister than that in the show. It's something that kind of represents male authority and have it at this point in the show where it's sort of at, at the end because you have the male figures at the beginning too yeah yeah so there's like you know if you take there's it a, there's an arc to it there's definitely an arc well to when it. you take in the whole show yeah there's a there's sort of a narrative yes in the sense that this is a novitiate novitiate uh, basically when a, when a, a novice becomes a uh, becomes fully ordained as a nun it's um the sacrament is almost a kind of a marriage ceremony, hence the term Brides of Christ. It's also they refer to as taking the veil, because they often wear, I don't know if this is still the case, but certainly in the 50s and 60s, there are all, there are all these pictures of these women, and I know in the late 19th century, too, I've seen paintings like this, where they're wearing basically wedding, wedding gowns with a full veil, uh, and that's representing a Mary in Christ. Uh, but I found this one really interesting image from around, I think it must have been the late 60s. There was one particular nun that had this full-length mm. gold lame opera glove. I guess it was the late 60s, so even the nuns were getting groovy and, and, <laughs> and, 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 and sort of acid influenced. So that's kind of where that came from. When I saw that, I thought, well, that's kind of an interesting sort of mixture of these different kinds of cultural references in there. Uh, so that's that's where that came from. The nun with that that actual it's, it's two separate images. In this case, it was the nun came from one image, and then the hand uh, came from came from that photograph that I found. I mean, I hadn't looked really closely at this painting, but now that I do, I mean, the look in her eyes and on her face is very seductive. Well, I hadn't really thought of it that way. <laughs> maybe that's maybe that's the case. I mean, she is again. Or maybe demure is the right I, word. I, I, you I know? thought of it that way. I mean, uh, I try not to psychologize these things yeah, yeah, too much yeah, because yeah. then it becomes too much one thing when you're painting it. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, no, it I, just happens. You, you right? end up being surprised by how these things end up. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. Right. But it ties into the whole theme of yeah. You know, it ties uh, into these sort uh, of sublimated desire. What yeah, happens? Well, you know, what the taboo of uh, yeah. sexuality and actually anything to do with the physical body. And there's something. There's something. It's a, it's a theme that runs through the show is this whole idea of like of covering. Yes. You know, the, yeah. Yeah. The veil is there. It's sort of obliterates oh, everything yes, yeah. a little bit. This guy operates in secret too. And then the final image we'll get to eventually. Yes, the final yeah. image of, of a, it's a, a piece of a funerary statuary from 
Spain is of a, is of a, 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 a kind of a death center, which is also wearing a veil. So I really wanted to have it be a call back to this one, these two, which is sort of uh, that kind of rhyme with each other. These two veiled figures that that one represents the end of the line as death. Well, it's interesting because you know if you think about uh, the. Um, you know the 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 sacraments in mm -hmm. Catholicism. You know when when someone is uh, christened, yeah. or or no, christened. When you do your first communion, the girls wear white yeah. dresses, like yes, little right. wedding right. gowns. Yeah, you know? with these little you know these little uh, uh, lace gloves with the frill around it. Yeah. It's all kind of it is it is a weird sort of uh, coquettish vibe that they give the whole thing to. And it's it, as I was talking with a, a couple of critics and writers too. It's it's interesting how much Catholic imagery and the outfits and stuff have been taken up. They've been taken up by kind of like king fetish communities and yeah, things yeah, like that. Sure. Because they can see in that imagery that there's all these layers of desire and oppression <laughs> that are just really interesting to unpack. Absolutely. Um, well, let's go look at this. Uh, I mean, I guess uh, you want to talk about any of these other paintings? Uh, well, this one's actually from, this is actually, uh, it comes from a very specific film. It's in a movie called um, uh, To the Devil and Daughter with Nastasia Kinski. Nastasia Kinski might be 19 in this film. The blood wasn't on her face originally. I just thought that um, that was the later edition. Uh, and I wanted to show how, I, I just wanted, I wanted there to be some implied violence somewhere in the show. Yeah, well, I mean, it definitely, stuff comes out. There it definitely heightens that, yeah. There was originally another painting in the show that had that, and it was with the, with the full white habit and everything. Um, and then that painting sold, it's not in the show. So I thought I didn't want to have a show with no blood in it, so that ended up going in there. And then this is from, uh, this is from uh, sort of, it's based but then altered uh, an image from a movie called Killer Nun from the 70s, 1971. And this is a sequence at the end there where uh, the nun um, tries to seduce a handsome doctor played by Joe D'Alessandro, one of Andy Warhol's yeah. actors. Um, and so that was in there as well. So that was in there again to kind of illustrate this idea of going from kind of a state of purity and innocence, then there's sort of the fall, the crack up, and then elements of regret, judgment, and then a kind of resignation at the end, and then ending with death. So it was meant that you almost had these sort of different sort of chapters, you know, and, and, and all different women, but the different kind of uh, emotional states. There's definitely, um, I don't know what to do, like remorse or... A little bit, I always thought it was like a bit of resignation and acceptance. Resignation, end, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and coming right after sort of being subjected to yeah. this kind of judging figure who's probably going to torture some kind of confession out of you as well. Sting you with his yeah, <laughs> scorpion tail. Right. You'll, you'll, yeah, <laughs> you're going to be put up on the rock or something. You're, yeah, you're going yeah. you're to yeah. you're gonna be subjected to something unpleasant on for sure, and then that all leads to this amazing image. Oh, thanks. That's um, that's again, it's a piece of funeral sculpture from Spain. I think it's uh, I don't know, maybe from the 18th century or something. But again, I wanted to have this uh, this image. Of, I wanted to have this kind of anthropomorphic image of death in here, just because it's such a central thing in in uh, in, in Christian imagery and religious painting. There's there's so many images of a kind of uh, an idealized anthropomorphized figure of like a grim reaper. Uh, but that's actually, again, it, it looks like it's made of marble. It looks like it's a statue. Uh, but that was sort of, again, you, 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 sort of, you have these two prefaces. You have this sort of the prologue and the epilogue, beginning with Jesus and ending with death, although that Jesus sort of, the, the implication is that he's already represents death to begin with. So it was kind of this sort of circularity that as you went through the space, you'd start back up again from there. So, um, I'd like to shift to talk a little bit about painting technique. Sure. I mean, anybody who looks at these can recognize your skill. Like, it's so, um, um, I don't know the word, other than to say it's awesome, right? Mm -hmm. The <laughs> level of technical okay. um, skill, um, and, you know, especially with, with some of these, you know, they're almost like Lucy and Freud in, in the uh, Corpor corporeality of the well, you can feel they're al almost alive. One of the things that we talked about when I when I did the first show was that a lot of those paintings were done very simply and very quickly. They were done yeah. almost like oil sketches, yeah. and um, I didn't want them to look almost too pretty. And some of them, I like them to look uh, like a lot of the early ones were painted a lot more densely and had a bit more of a 
had a bit more of a rougher quality than that was a choice because it was 14 images so I kind of wanted to have them all sort of a similar stuff um, but with this time I thought I was going to spend a lot more time on each image individually and that's exactly what I did mm -hmm. so whereas in the first show probably every single one of those those portraits was done in one or two sittings and these ones it was just it, each one was done almost like a portrait commission so it was just a lot of persistent painting and repainting to get uh, to get something that looked really finished. In. Just, I mean, you know, just the you know, the flesh looks like flesh, the fabric mm -hmm. looks like fabric. Yeah, you know, it's a very yeah, a lot of traditional. Different. Yeah, it's, uh, it was different kind of techniques that I employed in that first show, which was then, which is the paint was a lot thicker in this one. Yeah, it was yeah. much much thinner and built up, kind of these more tried and true kind of uh, you know. The academic right yes yes yeah thing. fine art that. originally uh, i mean in the first show the idea was to not paint them like bougaros to not paint them with <laughs> that kind of thing whereas this one i thought okay i'll, I'll try and push that a little bit more because at least it's something that i haven't done before that was part of it and a lot of them are are done with uh they're done with an authentic lead white and there's no titanium white in these paintings except maybe in certain highlights uh, lead white is extremely toxic. If you buy it, you can barely mm, see it. Yeah, yeah. It's got tons of uh, health warnings on it, and those health warnings are in there just because it is so toxic and you know, work with latex gloves. And that lead white is what gives you these kinds of creamy kind of flesh tones and stuff. For sure. Um, so that was uh, that was something that was left over from the first show, but I learned a lot technically from painting that first cycle of portraits. Mm. So I applied that to these, and all these are done. First show, some of them were on panel, some of them were on canvas, and this one, in this case, these were all on, on panel. They're on panel. Um, did you like employ traditional like underpainting with? Uh, no, they weren't done with. They weren't done with like a, there was no sort of gray underpainting. Okay. Right? Really yeah. used to Grisade. They were yeah, built yeah. up, but then they were built up very quickly, um, yeah. and then and then they're built up through layers and layers on top of that. Right, right, right. Awesome. Yeah, just so, just anything else you want to say about the show or upcoming um, shows or work? Or? Uh, well, I mean, it's, it's one thing I will say about this body of work is that usually whenever I finish a, a big body of work like this, I feel sort of spent. I feel like I've, you know, it's kind of a satisfied feeling of sort of having said everything you want to say. Whereas with this one, and particularly with the last couple that I finished, I really feel like there was more here. So I'm actually producing more along along the same lines. I feel like there's a, another half of the show. I didn't feel that way when I started, but I felt that way when I finished it. So I'm going to be working on, you know, don't be surprised if you see more work <laughs> that's related to this. Kind of, there's going to be different sort of aspects of it. There's going to be different elements to it. Um, but for the most part, it's you're going to see some similar kind of imagery and maybe just sort of exploring it and even just technically exploring it in, in different ways too. It'd be awesome to see them all together at some point, you know, in a larger gallery. Okay. It would be. It would be. Uh, some of them are spread out because some of them are sold, but it would be, it would be fun to right, see right, them yeah, together. Right, yeah. Because they're all, they're all 9 by 12, you know, all the 9 portraits are all, even down to the first show, they were all, even the very earliest ones I did before there was a body work, they were all formatted the same way. And that became just kind of a, a yeah. force of habit. But it just means that if you were to show them all together, they would make a lot of sense. Yeah, well, it, it, it just, just another way to tie it all together, oh, right? Yeah, as you said. Right. Awesome. Well, thank you, John. This is awesome. It's my pleasure, Charles. It's always fun talking.